NASA's James Webb Space Telescope is a hot topic in the world of telescopes. Well, there hasn't been too much new in the form of high-powered space telescopes over the past few years, although James Webb is set to change things. Weighing in at a whopping 6,200 kilograms with a mission to broaden our understanding of the universe, the James Webb Space Telescope has quite a lot riding on its name. Literally, the telescope bears the name of NASA's second administrator, James Edwin Webb, who passed away nearly 30 years ago, with NASA referring to the Space Telescope as the largest, most powerful, and complex space telescope ever built and launched into space, it isn't too hard to see why it may earn the title the King of Space Telescopes. However, we haven't even mentioned anything specific about James Webb. So you may be asking yourself, what exactly will it do? What can we expect to find from its launch? Luckily, those questions are ones that we're here to answer. So buckle into your seats as we telescope into space and ask, is James Webb the king of space telescopes? Well, to answer that question, we'll have to start at the beginning of the project in 1996. With an estimated launch date in 2007 and a half billion dollar budget, the James Webb Space Telescope, or as we're going to refer to it from now on, the JWST, or Webb, was an enormous project at the time. After all, the Hubble Space Telescope, the current leader in high-tech space telescopes, had just launched six years prior. Interestingly, Hubble had a similarly sized $400 million budget before booming to an otherworldly $4.7 billion. Nonetheless, that should give a pretty quick comparison of just how big NASA expected the JWST to be. However, several delays and a few cuts to NASA's budget later brought about 2005 and a new redesign. The unique design hosted a massive construction period, with the telescope finishing construction in late 2016. With a 2018 launch period, the JWST was almost ready to launch until there was another delay, as a sunshield ripped during a practice deployment, and a board recommended new adjustments. 2020 rolled around and NASA delayed Webb's launch again. Although, with work eventually resuming, a launch date of October 31, 2021 was provided. But of course, this didn't stay for long, with another final official launch date of December 18, 2021, announced just September 8. Over the years, we've grown accustomed to hearing about how great the JWST will be and when it will launch. Fortunately, while the launch date continues to change, Webb itself hasn't. Well, not too much. This mammoth Northrop Grumman engineered telescope is truly a masterpiece. We've had virtually no experience with something of its power, size, and capabilities. That's even including Hubble, which looks to be running pretty far behind. Well, if you could even compare the two. The JWST and Hubble are two different beasts of a different caliber. While Hubble essentially holds its own as the world's most incredible visual space telescope, the JWST is entirely different. That's right. It's an infrared and ultraviolet telescope. While Hubble studies parts of space that we can see, Webb can see further. Well, in a sense that it can see further across the EM spectrum than we can. That means it'll be able to see things that we've never been able to see, especially those that are invisible to humans. Sure, we've had some IR telescopes before, although those were A, on Earth, and B, had this rather significant issue in the Earth and our satellites. Also, do you know how we just mentioned that Webb could see further exclusively in the sense of the EM spectrum? Sorry for the deception, but it happens that it can also see further, literally, than current devices, with an added bonus of higher quality and precision. That's thanks to the JWST's stationing about 1.5 million kilometers from the Earth. While that's to help remove the Earth's polluting IR and UV output, it will also prevent the massive telescope from colliding with other space telescopes. After all, a 22 by 11 meter temperature controlling sun shield and a 6.5 meter primary mirror are pretty large. They're huge, in fact. You may be wondering, what about the Hubble Space Telescope's primary mirror? 2.4 meters. The diameter alone is 2.7 times larger on the JWST than the Hubble Telescope. With this extra mirror space, NASA will view dimmer objects with a higher resolution and greater accuracy further away. As Webb will reflect a more significant area and focus on further things, it'll be much more accurate than current telescopes. Interestingly, Webb has a mirror diameter 2.7 times larger than Hubble's, with a weight nearly half the latter, 
Clocking in at 6,500 kilograms compared to Hubble's 11,000 kilograms, it's incredible that NASA has managed to squeeze so much power into such a small package. There's enough power in that package that Webb will look far into time. Well, specifically, the past. For those not too familiar with space telescopes, one of the most remarkable features is the ability to see back in time. It's incredible. These telescopes can see so far into space that light hasn't even caught up with where we are now. It's pretty strange. Even the light that we see from the sun is 8 minutes and 20 seconds in the past. So that's the closest star we can see. And any light we receive from it is from nearly 8 and a half minutes ago. While that's impressive, if we look at something a bit more robust, say the Hubble Space Telescope, we're talking about viewing about 10 to 15 billion light years away or the distance it takes light 10 to 15 billion years to travel. As for the JWST, estimates say it'll see at least 13.7 billion years into the past. A 40% jump over the Hubble doesn't seem too dramatic, but that's time that will let us know so much more about the universe. More interestingly, the universe is roughly 13.77 billion years old, meaning that Webb can see across virtually 99.5% of the universe's existence. That's incredible. Remember, the universe was formed and nearly grew to its current size within a fraction of a second. Now, imagine viewing billions of additional years into the past, and you can see how beneficial Webb can be. Especially consider that the JWST can almost see the universe's creation, and it should be pretty easy to find new intergalactic origin stories. In fact, NASA says that the JWST should be able to track hundreds of individual objects at once, thanks to its size and huge mirror. Previously, we've only had the ability for a few dozen objects at a time, or even just a few planets or stars. With Webb, though, we'll see so much more at once, way deeper into time and space. Plus, with all these benefits, it'll just be able to see further, in a literal sense. That's honestly a large enough benefit on its own. With Webb's infrared detection, it'll see into distant exoplanets, view stars as they were over 13 billion years ago, and essentially scan galaxies for traces of essential chemicals. While Hubble can view some of these things, the extra distance provided by Webb's IR images will view even further, letting us glean information on the birth of stars, planets, and even potentially galaxies. In addition, of course, we'll learn countless other things, whether relating to black holes, random phenomena, even aliens, and something we aren't even thinking of. With Webb's onboard science instrument model, solar power array, Earth transmitting antenna, star trackers, and more, there's a lot of data and information we can take from what the telescope can see. It's much more than any other telescope we have today. Sort of. Fortunately and unfortunately, there's not too much of a solid comparison between Webb and anything we have today. The Hubble Space Telescope is the best orbiting comparison, but it's nowhere near the size, power, or even wavelength of the JWST. Even looking at infrared imaging, there's nothing close. Our Earth is just so chaotic to ground sensors that it's near impossible to find anything. Remember, Webb will sit 1.5 million kilometers from the Earth, have a massive 6.5-meter primary mirror, use infrared and ultraviolet wavelengths, and see nearly 14 billion years into the past. We don't have any established observatories that far away from Earth, primary mirrors currently operating near that size, anything even using IR and UV, and that can see that far into the past. While, of course, the James Webb Space Telescope isn't an end-all be-all for space telescopes, it's undoubtedly much closer to one than we've ever been before. If its launch and mission work successfully, you can bet that we're going to find a few new things across the universe that we've never seen before. There's the chance to find exoplanets like Earth, view the creation of some of the most complicated objects in the universe, give us clues to our own creation, and so much more. So with that in mind, James Webb is the king of space telescopes. It's not even close. It doesn't make a difference whether you're comparing Webb to current telescopes, current Earth operations, or specs and designs. The JWST is so different from anything we currently have that it will shame any existing space telescope. Well, unless you like pretty visual pictures, as that's something Hubble does better than Webb. And so, what do you all think? Is James Webb the king of space telescopes? 
While many other space-intrigued people, and we, believe so, it's understandable if you disagree. There's the potential addition of Starship as a massive telescope, and who knows what else is in the works. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below, and make sure to check back for more news before Webb's launch in December.